Welcome back to the ARM microcontroller tutorial series. At this point in the series, the IDE, Integrated Development Environment software, has been installed. The interface software that connects to the USB port called the ST-Link has also been installed. If you don't have this software installed, follow the links to these videos or go to newbiehack.com for more information. For the circuits in these videos, I'll be using a setup like this, which is the microcontroller soldered onto a breakout. The breakout is connected to three breadboards, which provide access to all of the pins, and also provides two tie strips for each pin in line. You can get this prototyping set up at newbiehack.com. In this video, we're gonna set up the breadboards and add the components necessary to transfer programs from the IDE, from the computer, to this microcontroller using the ST-Link. The first thing we'll do is tie all of these power rails together. So we have power, positive, which is the VCC, and negative, which is ground, all tied together so we can provide power to the microcontroller, connecting the power to the appropriate pins. To do this, we will connect the positive and negative from each breadboard tie strips to the next one. So the positive will go to this positive, the negative will go to this negative, and the same thing here. So let's get started. We'll take the first wire, go from the negative to the negative on the other side, and then from the positive here to the positive. This side is complete. Now we'll do the other side, connecting these two power rails together. We'll start with the negative which is ground, to the negative on the other power rail, and then from the positive back to the positive. I want to make sure that the two wires are not touching. I'm going to actually move these apart a little bit just in case. Now we'll need to find out which of these pins need to connect to ground and VCC. To do this, we're gonna use a cheat sheet that describes what each pin does on this breakout board. And we're gonna to go to newbiehack.com to find that cheat sheet, so we can, we can use that as a reference. In newbiehack.com, click on ARM development, ARM tutorials, and click on introduction, and you'll find the first video explaining the the ARM development, and scroll down and you can see the diagram. And use the scroll bars to be able to see the entire diagram. On the left of the diagram, you'll find pins 1 through 30, and then 31, 32, 33, and 34 on the bottom. And on the right, you'll find the remaining pins 35 through 64. So let's see which pins are associated with power to power the controller. Already we can see that the number one pin is associated with power, the VDD digital power supply. So let's go ahead and connect that one. As on the diagram, the number one pin is located at the corner of the breakout board. We'll first bridge these two tie strips together. That's associated with the number one pin. And now we want to take the number one pin, this tie strip, and put it to the plus. For good measure, I'm gonna add a bypass capacitor, which is a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. In general, I'll put this next to all of the power and ground connections, and generally I'll put them as close to the, the chip as possible, but in this case, there's only a single VDD and there's no ground next to it, so I'm putting it at the closest place I can to the, to the ground and the power. Here we are at newbiehack.com again, looking at the diagram. We can see that there's a ground and power supply pins at 12 and 13, but these are VSSA, which is ground, and VDDA, which is power, but for the analog to digital converter. And we're not gonna be connecting anything on these pins at this time, since we're not gonna be using the, the analog to digital converter. Scrolling down, we'll, we do notice that pins number 31 and 32. 31 is VSS, which is ground, and pin number 32, which is the same as pin number one. 
And we're gonna go ahead and plug both of those into the power rails, the ground into the minus and the, the VDD supply into the plus. Just like on pin number 31, we're going to extend the tie strips by connecting them together. 31 and 32. We're gonna take the number 31 pin and connect it to the minus rail. And pin number 32 goes to the plus rail. And again, we'll use our bypass filter capacitor, which is 0.1 UF, and we'll put it between the power and ground pins as close to the board as possible. The capacitor is spanning between pins number 31 and 32. Okay, let's check the other side of the board to see if there's any more. Nothing on the bottom portion. We have number 63 and 64 ground and positive supply. So let's go ahead and connect those. Okay, here are pins 63 and 64. We'll do the same thing with the tie strips. And 63 is ground, so I'll take that one to the, the ground rail or the negative rail. And number 64 is positive, so I'll take that to the plus rail. And another capacitor can be added between pins number 63 and 64. Now we need to connect the ST link to the microcontroller. This will give us the ability to transfer programs to the microcontroller using this as an interface between the computer and the microcontroller. The ST link comes with a cable that has four female headers on each end that will connect to four pins on the back of the ST link. And the pins that we're going to be using is the SWCLK, SWDIO. The CLK is the clock and the DIO is the, the data input output. We'll be using the ground and the 3.3 volts. You also have a 5 volts connection if you need it. It gives you the option to use 5 volts on your board. You'll notice there's a notch on this end here and that corresponds to the notch that's on the left hand side of this diagram on the ST-Link. And we'll be using the ones on the other side. And the pins that we'll be using is, is the ones on the top right looking at it in this direction. The first one that we'll connect is the, the SWCL case, the clock. And I'll use the green, the green wire for that. So we have the green wire connected to the first pin. And I'm just going to go in the same order that the cable has in this ribbon. So the next one is blue. And I'll use the blue for the SWDIO. The ground pin is next. The next wire in the cable, in the ribbon cable, is purple, so I'll use that for ground. And the final pin is 3.3 volts, the power supply, and I'll use the last one, the gray. So now we have all of our headers inserted into the pins. We can put the other side on the appropriate pins on the breadboard. But there's first something we need to do to these pins to make them male so we can plug them into the breadboard. I'm going to use a male header strip. I'm just going to break off one for each female header. I need to prepare this so I'll have enough metal to be able to go into the breadboard and go into the, the female header snugly. So I'm simply going to put it between these pliers. I'm just going to bring it down. So it's about even. I'm going to do that for the remaining three. And each one can be inserted into the female header. So they're pretty snug. They should stay in without a problem. So now we need to find out where to plug these into the breadboard. The only pins we really need to find is for the SWCLK for the clock and the SWDIO. So let's take a look and see where, see where we can find them. The SWCLK is at pin number 49 and the SWDIO is on pin number 46. We don't really need to be concerned with the ground and 3.3 volt because we're just going to put those in the power rails anyway. So the 3.3 volt pin will go to the plus rail and the ground will go to the minus rail. The SWCLK, which is my green wire, 
is connected to pin number 49 and the SWDIO which is my blue wire is on pin number 46 because the SWDIO and the SWCLK pins are floating pins they need to be externally pulled high or pulled low for the SWCLK that pin needs to be pulled low. First I'm going to put a resistor on each pin. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this tie strip from the pin of the breakout board and I'm, I'm jumping to the next tie strip using a resistor. Since these tie strips aren't connected I can put a resistor across those and now I have a resistance between this tie strip and this tie strip. So now all we have to do is connect these tie strips to the appropriate power rail to bring this one low and bring this one high. So we'll start with the SWCLK and we'll bring that low. We'll place it on the tie strip and then the next pin go to the negative rail. Now for the S SWDIO we'll place that first on the, the positive and then on the tie strip for SWDIO. Okay, so the SWCLK has a resistor and being connected to the low, and the SWDIO has a resistor and then connecting to the high, which is the 3.3 volts. Now we'll take the remaining wires, which is the ground and 3.3 volts. The ground was the purple one, and the 3.3 volt was the the gray one and we'll connect those on the power rail. So I'll take the ground which is the purple, place it on the negative rail and the 3.3 volt which is the gray and place it on the positive, positive rail. We've connected everything we need to be able to communicate to the market controller and send programs to it but we haven't added anything to the board that will communicate to us that the program is working. So we'll add an LED to one of the pins and we'll turn the LED on and off by controlling that particular pin. For the simple function of turning on and off an LED, I'm going to select pin PC6, which is connected to pin number 37 on the breakout board. Since LEDs need resistors, I'm going to add an LED across the two tie strips that's connected to the pin number 37. The LED will be connected from that tie strip to the ground because when the pin is powered it will be on the positive side of the LED and then the negative side of the LED will be on ground and the ground side of the LED should be the, the side of the LED that has the flat. The flat side or the ground side is the cathode and the other side which is the positive side is the anode. This completes the circuit building for the first project connecting the interface, the ST-Link interface, to the, the microcontroller and connecting some device to be able to view our program working. In the next video, we'll write the program to turn the LED on and off. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you for watching.